Well, hello there, people. I've been asked to do something with Brody Robertson. Or Robert... Robertson? Son? I, I don't know why I can't say that last name. <laughs> so I just... This video just came up in, in uh, on YouTube called... Uh, we have too many distos, or do we? So yeah, let's, uh, let's just dive into it and um, see what's happening. I think it's fair to say that we have a lot of Linux distros. And with that comes a distro for basically any use case. We have regular day-to-day -day distros. We have gaming distros. We have business distros. We have science distros. And we even have spyware distros. And I think it's also fair to say that we probably have too many distros, considering the fact that a lot of these distros exist in the exact same niche, but aren't offering anything new. Yeah, I, I call it parallel development or what you would call it. Uh, I don't know if that's the name for it. Look at it like this. You have one development team developing or, or tackling or solving a problem, and then you have another development team doing the exact same thing in the same manner, almost identical, but they don't talk to each other, but they are, you know, coexisting between each other. Or, or they are, you know, developing uh, between each other or alongside each other. And you see that with a lot of distributions. A lot of distributions, uh, I, I would guess 90% of distributions out there is just, they are the same. It's just a wallpaper, an icon, maybe pre-installed packages. That's the only difference. They change the icon, they put on a fancy wallpaper, they maybe theme it up, and they take out Thunderbird or in Firefox and install, I don't know, Quo. And then they call it Josephine's uh, Magnificent Distributions of Delight and Rainbows. But yeah, let's uh, dive deeper. So it seems like there is a lot of wasted effort being made, mm -hmm. just not really achieve anything. Mm -hmm. Not to say that you can't go make your own distro if you want to go make it. If you want to do that, be my guest. But there is one very important question. How many distros do we actually have? And is this problem getting better or worse? And there's one site that's been around for a really long time, which attempts to keep track of this. I hope, I hope for the love of everything, for the love of the Linux gurus and the GNU gurus and BSD gurus that he's not using DistroWatch. DistroWatch is a really, really niche specific site. Let me put it this way. What you see on DistroWatch, the amount of distributions there, it's a really obscured uh, number, and it's probably only 10% of what's out there. It's uh, not a good metric. There are so many distributions makes that don't even want the distribution out there that are popular. There are so many used distributions that are not there because they have not been submitted. And the popularity rank is only between the ones that are already in there. Like the TMC of, uh, of Linux. Distro-related data. That site being DistroWatch. No. Now, I've discussed in the past, I'm not really a big fan of the way that DistroWatch handles their distro rankings. But when it comes to being a news feed and a general database of distros, I feel like they do a really good job. No, they don't. They don't. Like I said, there are so many criteria for how to get onto DistroWatch that they are not really a good database for. That's why the Distro ranking is really bad. Esnix, you know, Esnix always was on there for a while that got took, getting ticked, uh, was, or he requested being taken down. Has happened plenty of time. There are crazy distributions that I hear from once in a while that people are like, have you seen this? And I'll go on to DistroWatch to see if it's on there and it's not on there. I, I think a better metrics would be like if you could get to see how many distributions there are on SourceForge, because it's one of the biggest hosting sites for Linux distributions. So if you could see how many distributions and, and how many downloads each distribution have on SourceForge, we are ga kind of getting somewhere. It's a highly curated site. And with curation, you get less accuracy, when it comes to statistics anyway. Their focus is not bringing you statistics. Their focus is not bringing you accurate numbers. It's just to basically be a popularity site. And a little while back, they put out this Q&A going over DistroWatch data, the data on the users, data on database trends, and things like that. This is a really good read, but there's one part I want to focus on today, that being this graph down here. 
Historically speaking, ask. It I actually posted this graph into my Discord. It would be interesting to see a database summary graphed over time, one, five, or ten years, and see what trends might be picked up from the data. And Jesse answers, I like the way you think. I did a dive into the stats for the past dozen plus years, June 2010 to June 2022, and graphed the summary numbers for our database. The y-axis shows the number of projects in a given category, while the x displays the number of weeks since June 2010, in this graph right here. In no specific order, the blue line represents the active distros. DistroWatch defines an active distro as a distro that has still got a active site, and is being updated on a regular basis. It doesn't have to be updated every day or every week, but it is still being updated with some form of frequency. The green line indicates the waiting distros. These are distros which are trying to be listed on DistroWatch, but currently do not have a page available. So they've applied to the site, but the maintainer hasn't got to them in the list. It's not part of things like the page ranking or the news feed tracking and things like that. The red line indicates the dormant distros. So a dormant distro is a distro that has not had a published release in a set period of time, but the site is still active. So you'll see a lot of distros that pop up, do a few releases, and then just sort of die, but not completely. Like their site is still up, but nothing's really happening with them. And then the yellow line indicates the discontinued distros. So like with the dormant distros, it hasn't had an update in a set period of time, but unlike the dormant distros, their site has also been taken down. So maybe the dev just doesn't want to keep paying for the server or whatever other reason they have, but this distro is completely dead. I don't really like these criteria that they are putting up here because it's, it's like dormant versus discontinued. Well, if you, if you have a website that's active, that don't mean that you are active or dormant. That, you, you, that, that, you know, you pay, you know, for the domain X amount of years ahead. And you could have an active website just to keep a discontinued project alive or, 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 or active customers for a, a discontinued project or users happy for some, you know, for some time before you pull the plug 100%. I've been part of the Linux community for 25 plus years and I know it sounds like a flex but it gives you context to what I'm going to talk about right now. I've been following DistroWatch ever since they came out on on, on the website ever since, every time, ever since there was a site. I've been following Linux distributors of course for 25 years. One thing I have seen personally is that the amount of, of, of discontinued projects uh, or, or discontinued distributions keep rising and rising and rising. You will see over the years that active distributions will fall and discontinued will go up. Why? Because it gets harder and harder and harder to break into the Linux market because the demand there is for Linux is already being fulfilled by the big distributions that have been around for years. So there's a couple of interesting takeaways and things to keep in mind when looking at this graph. Oh. Firstly is with the active line. So you'll notice that generally it sits around 300 with the most variation being in the waiting list. So theoretically you could take that entire waiting list and then just dump it into active. No, no, no. Oh yeah, you can. Yeah, because they are active, but that don't help the active list that much, to be honest. But the reason why active tends to sit around 300 is 300 is a reasonable amount for the maintainer to track for things like the news feeds, announcement, the database size, the ranking, and things like that. But if we take active plus waiting, it gives us a better representation of how many distros are actually active. I say representation because not every single distro is going to want to be listed on DistroWatch. I, I'm a little bit confused. Is, is it trying to inf inflate the active numbers by putting in the waiting list into them? That will not help them at all. Like, instead of the waiting list, and the thing that, oh, they only have 300 active distributions on, on, on DistroWatch because it's easier for them to track. No, that's not the case. It's because every time someone becomes uh, active on DistroWatch, one or two distributions get discontinued. You know, they take someone else's place. This is not something that's curated, or we can only handle 300. No. What would happen if you put these together is that instead of being around 300, 
they will probably just hover around 400. That's the only difference here. You, you're just inflating the numbers, but the, the, the trend where here they will be going down a little bit. The, the thing is say that, oh, it's because it's easy to keep 300, no, uh, you know, uh, manage 300 distributions on their side. That's bullshit. Most of it is automated. He should know that. 99% of what they're doing is automated. And if it's not automated, they need to get their fucking fingers out of their ass and automate it. Because you can't do that manually, okay? Give us a general trend of how many distros are actually available. So there seems to have been a steady growth from 2010 up until about 2013 or so, with a dip happening seemingly out of nowhere, and then another growth happening until the end of 2014, with another dip happening, and then the waiting list has only been going pretty much down since then, and then leveling off in maybe the past two or so years. I'm not certain on why this dip happened, but considering the fact that it affected all of the lines, I'm guessing there was like an adjustment in the way the database was being handled, and a lot of stuff was just being cleared out. Oh, it could be that the automation just didn't work. And considering the jump in discontinued, my guess is there was a lot of things sitting inside of the waiting list, which had been in the waiting list for so long, that by the time the maintainer actually got to them, they were already discontinued and went straight to that list. But for the overall data, it's hard to make an assessment on how many distros have been in that state over time. So just looking at the data as it is, it seems like the highest amount of distros at any one point was around maybe 670, 650 or so, with the lowest point being around 450 in roughly 2018. Honestly, from what I've heard about the general Linux landscape, I would have expected this green line to be like, flipped around so this to be over on this side and this to be over on this side with like a peak being maybe in like 2021 or and it could be because he's trying to use these data as facts a little bit like fact and they are really obscure data because these numbers here only account for distributions that distrowatch know about that's why they you can't you can't we can't draw any conclusion from this we can only draw the conclusion from what is going on on distrowatch registered distributions not on what's going on on source faults which is probably the best way to get statistics for or osd on or oscd or what the fuck you know those uh, hosting sites that are hosting the the distributions not to mention a lot of distributions nowadays, especially if they have a little bit of money behind them, they host that the, the, uh, you know they host it on their own site, and they are not even part of Distrowatch either. Look at it like this: it's a trend behind the most popular distributions in this uh, in the Linux landscape. Not all of them are not even close to it. Early 2022, for example. But the actual peak was around eight or so years ago. Now discontinued is a really interesting line because this generally goes up in a fairly steady rate. Mm -hmm. What this shows to me is that there is a lot of distros being made out there which don't really have any reason to exist. It's just mm -hmm. effectively a glorified install script that someone made. No, it's not a glorified install script. It <laughs> It's the it's it's the you know the the, the parallel uh, development I talked about he he alluded to in the beginning is that too many people try to solve the same problem without looking if someone is trying to solve that problem. Is anyone making an easy a uh, more easy convenient arts distribution? No, let me make one. No, they close their eyes. No, 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 no. Let me make one. They don't go and do their research. So they make one and then they're like, oh, well, there's hundreds of distributions doing that. And they are getting frustrated and blah, 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 because they can't get any users and they stop doing it. Everyone wants to make a distribution because they think it's sexy. They don't look at, is it needed? And they think that if I just take Ubuntu and change the wallpaper, I can outcompete Ubuntu. Or if I take Ubuntu and take out Firefox, or I changed the you know uh, GNOME with XFCE. I can now outcompete Ubuntu, and a lot of people are doing that. Most of those are not even on DistroWatch. 
for themselves, and then probably one of their friends said, hey, make that public. But they'd never actually planned to maintain a distro, so all of these distros get dumped out onto the internet, but nobody's actually doing anything with them. I'm sure that some of them do get maintained for a brief period of time, but then people realize, wait, maintaining a distro is actually a lot of work, and I don't have the time or the energy to actually go and do that. I, I think there's something about that, that they get, um... <laughs> they, they get like a culture shock that, oh my god, I have to deal with the customer support now, and, and user support, and stuff like that. But what I honestly think is the most problem here, or the biggest problem why they, they, they stop doing it, and it's also what I've heard from people doing distributions, especially hobbyists, that they don't get massive popular. It, it's a little bit like this. A lot of people, they start a YouTube channel, if, and if they don't have a million or hundred thousand subscribers within like a month or two, they get frustrated, they get irritating, they get angry, and they ditch YouTube. A lot of people make distributions for the same reasons. They think they can get some recognition, they think it's sexy. You know, it, making a distribution is our uh, equivalent to being a musician, you know, a guitar player. You know, they do it because they get all them girls, you know, and all of that shit. And then they realize it's too much fucking work. It's not as easy as, as they thought it was. And it's a really hard grind to just get taken seriously in the digital world because there are so many you're competing with. And because they don't get that instant gratification, they go and do this instead. You get what I'm saying here? They're like, yo, I don't want to deal with that. Continue. Do this. So over time, this number just rises and rises and rises. And what it also shows us is, I don't think there is a single point in this list where there is a reasonable drop. Maybe some of these distros do actually come back, but most of the distros that are made that get discontinued are just dead and... No, he, he, he's trying... <laughs> He's really trying to make this look positive for Linux. It's not, okay? It's really not positive for Linux. What is happening is that if two distribution dies, one kid comes in to fill the void. Or if a project dies, it's spin off to one or two other projects with, a, you know, two other distributions. And statistic, statistically, they both fail. If they are really lucky, only once becomes popular. So yeah, the, the discontinued one, he's trying to put a positive spin on it. There it just is not, not one. Why is it going up? It's going up because more and more distributions are discontinuing than they are being act than they are active. That's why it's going up. Why do they go away? Because there's no market for it. So there are no, they, you know, you can't fill that void. It's really hard to fill a void if a distribution gets discontinued because there's no market for it. Because it, the market that you then are trying to fill is the market that the previous distribution is trying to fill that basically didn't got anywhere because there was not no market for it so yeah that that, that, that he's <laughs> he's trying to do something positive with that line and the 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 harsh reality is that there are just too many distributions being made compared to their users for that's the way they stay and the dormant line sort of backs up that theory as well which is basically a straight line with a couple of little dips here and there and this one big jump where all of the lines moved at the exact same time. So you're probably seeing a lot of distros out there where they'll make like one or two releases, they'll try to get listed on Distro Watch, they don't really continue with it, and by the time they get listed on the site, the site's still active, but no... Yeah, he's messing this up. Dormant distributions... <laughs> they are already on DistroWatch. Because else they can't track them. They are not tracking ethnic OS. He could make his ethnic OS dormant. That will not be tracked in this statistic because it's not on DistroWatch site. DistroWatch only track distributions that are in the database. And that's distribution on the waiting list and on the active list. And if they become dormant or discontinue, they still track them. Unless the developer asks to take them away, or for some reason they take them away. So, so him saying that they are tracking dormant distributions that are not on DistroWatch, that's not right. That's wrong. The only track distributions that are already in the DistroWatch database. And that's why it's a really faulty 
metrics to look at. Not if you're looking at how is the, the metrics from DistroWatch database. What is DistroWatch database saying? That's the only accurate thing we can get out of this. Take this over to say, oh, this is how it's going on with the Linux in general. No fucking way. So he is try again, he's trying to put this into a positive spin and, and hey, <laughs> she was pretty when I was drunk, you know. She didn't have like warts all over her face when I, when I was looking at her with all her makeup, all makeup on. Yeah, she didn't look like she weighed 600 pounds when I was dancing with her. You know, we all trying to make some things look more positive than they are. I may fuck the fucking goat, but and hey, it looked at me funny. You know, you get what I'm saying here. He's trying to stretch this a little bit. It's a really interesting statistic, but it's only an interesting statistic if you're looking at it from the DistroWatch database. But he is actually bothered to keep developing it. Now, if the only distros we were dealing with were the active and the waiting distros, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Sure, 500 distros is still a lot of distros, but over the past 10 years, that number has come down a little bit and then flatlined in the past couple of years. The problem that I see is we're not always dealing with the distros you should be using. <laughs> there is still a lot of media outlets out there that will recommend distros that don't make any sense, that are completely dead. Like, before the Steam Deck came out, you would still see articles recommending SteamOS 2. I've run across a couple of them recently, and I don't know how they still exist. It's it's easy. They, the, those, <laughs> those YouTubers and articles that are recommending outdated, dormant distributions have no idea what's going on. They have not done their research. They, they, they just look at, hey, Joe, last year you talked about 10 Linux distributions. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just coming out from the toilets why it was dark. Why? Uh, can you put them into a top 10 for me? Yeah, yeah, and then he, they write down 10 distributions. They have not even bothered to look at if they're still active or anything like that. Or, hey, Josephine, you installed this Ubuntu thing once, in, like 10 years ago or two years ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what was the best programs? And then they're just like, well, it had Firefox. It had Thunderbird. It had rhythm box. That's the top three programs for Ubuntu. That's how most articles are being wrote, uh, written nowadays. People are lazy. And you see this over and over with Linux YouTubers and, and tech YouTubers in general. Most of them give you outdated information because they don't do their research or they make an article because someone is like, oh, there's a talk about Linux. Let's make an article about Linux. And then they do the bare minimum. Like they're like, like I said, they're talking to someone that used Linux 10 years ago or five years ago, and then they're just writing it down. It's because journalists are not journalists anymore. They are clickbaiters. Just in case anyone forgot, SteamOS 2 was based on Debian. It was mm -hmm. based on Debian 8. Debian 8 Jesse, which some people watching this channel probably weren't even using Linux when that came out. That came out in 2015. I think all the blame in that regard falls on the outlets who are recommending these very dead distros. None of the blame lies on the new Linux users because if you see an outlet... No, of course, the... <laughs> He's actually right here. And, and it, it's a big fucking bugbear of mine is that Linux fan, fan people, fanboys and fangirls we have to remember the girls and linux youtubers and linux reddit people and stuff like that they love to yell and scream about the stupid things that new users are doing but they tend to forget that new users are doing, doing stupid things because we have told them to do so in outdated articles outdated knowledge misinformation trying to push an agenda try to make them sucked with the stallman's cock and stuff like that and then we are, are yelling at them for doing bad things. Well, it's because we have told them to do it. Or we have showed them to do it. Because we don't want to do the, the research. We don't want to give out proper information. That is, it seems like it's from 2021 or 2022, recommending something like SteamOS. You're going to think, hey, this is being recommended. Clearly, this is something that I should be using. Because if you're new to Linux, why would you know what options are available? If you know what options are available, you wouldn't be reading an article like that. And how do you know what options are available? You listen to more than one article or video. 
you, you read more than one article. This is what makes Linux so fucking difficult. It's not that it's hard to understand. It's that it's really hard to get good information. We are not giving new users a good base to start from. Actually, we are, we are shooting them in the foot as many times as possible. And some, some people are really good and fucking fighting to do this. And they, I don't care if you shoot me in the foot. Take my fucking testicles. I don't care. I want to use Linux. And they plow through that fucking bullshit. And they land with whatever distribution they land on and actually start to learn Linux. But getting into Linux, like back in the day when we didn't have that many distributions, it's not that big of a deal. There were like three or four distributions worth mentoring, mentoring for new users. Everything else was for people that have been using Linux for years. Nowadays, Linux has become so easy that you can basically want... Ask Linux is not even difficult. Like, it's not difficult. Gentle. Back in the day, you fucking need... You, you, like, I talked to someone that so much wanted to use Gentle that they had to install KDE, okay? They put their laptop out on the fucking terrorist in the snow to compile Gentle overnight to just wake up and have a compile error. Why? Because the laptop got so fucking overheated. We don't have that problem today because our computers are too powerful for, you know, not too powerful, but they can handle compiling with fucking no problem. So yeah, we didn't recommend Ubuntu back then. Nowadays we can because we have this, the hardware power for it. You get what I'm saying here? Back then, like 10, 15 years ago, or at least 15 years ago, if you were new to Linux, you only had a select few options. Nowadays, almost any Linux distributions is available for a new user if they get the right information and if they get the right help to start out with them, but they don't. I think over time, this is getting a little bit better, partially because the media outlets are slightly getting better, mm. but because a lot more attention is being put on the individual creators. So rather than going and reading like top 10 Linux distros from whatever random Linux outlet, you go and watch a Linux reviewer on YouTube and they're like, hey, this is- Those are heavily biased also. Look at this to two. I would even say that Brody Robertson, or, yeah, Robertson, to some extent is a little bit biased. Go watch Luke Smith, Metal Outlaw. There are really few distro reviewers out there that don't try to push something on you their own ideologies or ideas and stuff like that. This is what this distro does. It's like a 20 or 30 minute video. It might still be a fairly surface level look at what it actually is. Then that's then take it for what it is. List videos are not meant to be informative videos. List videos is, is all they are are opinionated videos. This is in our opinion, the distributions we like. And if they still like Steam OS. You can't do anything about it if they still like to run it. If they still think it's better than anything else we have right now. Again, it's just an opinion. It's not a fact that any top 1, 2, 3, 4, 100 list is all they are is an opinion. If I make a, a, a top 5 or 6 list video or 10 video, that's my opinion. Nothing more. That don't mean that they are the best distribution or best software but they are, in my opinion. And I could be liking stuff that's not being maintained anymore. There are a lot of people using outdated software. But it gives you a better representation on what you can actually see with it. And anybody who's being honest there isn't going to go and look at something that is just completely dead. If they're going to go and look at a distro, it's going to be something that someone might actually want to use. And at least since I've been using Linux, there seems to be this growing focus on distro bases. So rather than going and using some like random weird fork of Arch or Debian or Ubuntu or Fedora or anything else like that, go and use Arch, go and use Fedora, go and use Ubuntu. And there are still some recommendations of forks, but they're more established forks. So there seems to be... I, I, I get what he's trying to say here, but what he's trying to say is that people are starting to, to <laughs> luckily enough, to recommend big established distribution. Gentoo, or not Gentoo, Ubuntu, or Ubuntu-based, as I call it, um, Arts-based, arts, arts -based, Debian, Debian-based, uh, Fedora-Fedora-based. 
most nowadays what I hear is that run Ubuntu, run Art, run Fedora, run Debian, depending on what your interest level is and, and what your, your existing skill level for technology is when you go into it. You, you pick between those four distributions. And it could be, it don't have to be Ubuntu, it could be like a Mint, it could be like a Solven, like an Ubuntu spin-off. This sort of consolidation of users into a lot less distros, rather than being spread out across, you know, hundreds of different options. Not to say there still isn't a lot of spread, but it is starting... Ah, he likes the spread. Mm, mermaids. ...thing to sort of come back together. And I wouldn't be surprised if that is part of the reason leading to less overall active distro no 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 again he's trying to put this into a positive spin stop it okay <laughs> he's trying to 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 find excuses it is what it is the numbers don't lie we, we can't put a positive spin on this this is the beauty of numbers they don't lie they don't put they, they don't care about your feelings or what you want to see they don't lie. And for the distorts database, this is the numbers we have to deal with. We can try and, and, and put our big brain on it and be like, well, I have this theory. I don't, the theories don't care. It don't matter because these are the numbers. Just, just be honest and say, this is the numbers. Make out of what you want. But according to the distorts database, this is the numbers. No matter what I'm trying to convince you of, these numbers will not change. <laughs> We could speculate why they are like this. You know, why are they like this? But the, the fact is that they won't change. The fact is, on this what's database, the discontinuing of distributions is going up. The waiting list and the active list is somewhat stable. The same with dormant. But they are looking like they're going on a little bit of a decline the last couple of years. That's the facts. Why that is could be an interesting subject, but that don't take away from the facts. And we can't be like, um, let's put some of them together to like inflate the numbers so they don't look that bad. No. If you want to know how it looks like on Distowards, you have it right there, people. Right there. No, we don't have to put anything together or morph anything together or try to make it look better than this. No, th this is how it looks like. This is how it actually is. Numbers don't lie. Okay, this is how it is. I can keep telling people I'm 25 till the, till the day I die, but I'm not. I keep telling people, I can keep wills that I feel like it or will my body work say I'm 20. You know, I can find all kinds of excuses that are really interesting to talk about. But in the end, I got born in a certain year and I, you know, I can't lie from that. The same with these numbers here, they don't lie. Again, why they are like this could be an interesting debate. But he's really doing his best to be like, it looks really bad that there's a lot of discontinued distribution, but let me explain why that may not be the case. It's this, Distowatch did this in, in a video where he talked about market share. And he's like, oh, those statistics is grossly underestimating Linux. And then he throw out like five or 6% is probably the right market share for Linux distributions on the desktop or the Linux desktop. And I'm like, what basics do you have on that? Do you have any, any statistics that can back that up? And then he's, I've heard on other, in other ways that he was, he did the same as bro. He tries to put stuff together. So they look favorable for Linux. So he did this like, okay, the unknown, those are definitely Linux. No, 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 no. If you want to put the unknowns into anything, you have to put them equally into Windows, Mac OS, FreeBSD, and Linux. They are unknown. We can't just say that all unknown is Linux because it would, it, it would make Linux look nice. If you want to, to, you know, morph them into something, you do it equally. That's the fair way of doing it. But then it don't, you know, you don't get Linux higher up. <laughs> you know, you get everyone higher up. And it's kind of what he's trying to do here. How can we make it look not so bad? <laughs> you know, how can we make the data, da the, the distort database look l more favorable and not as as a fucking dumpster fire? As it, like, if 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 I was was betting on Linux distributions, and I saw this here and I had to put money into it, I I was shorting the Linux stocks, meaning that 
I would put money in more and more distributions being uh, discontinued than act than being active or in the waiting list of being dormant because this is the trend we see. I I I would be put money in and saying that the discontinuing will 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 let's say grow one percent next year, two percent the year after. That's the trend we see. That I would not put money in that oh the active ones is going up because it's been stable. I would not put money in that the waiting list will go up because it has been somewhat stable. I would not put money into the dormants would be lower or higher. Also been somewhat stable. One thing that we can, if you had to put ten million dollars and and want a, a return from it in, is that the discontinue line would keep growing and growing and growing. But he's trying to make it look not so. He's trying to make it a little bit nicer. You know, <laughs> there may be fire in our house, but at least in my department or my apartment, it's not that hot yet. So it could mean that it will not spread to our apartment. You get what I'm saying here? Let's just open the fridge so it, it's a little bit cooler in here. Just be honest. This this is not a good picture for Linux on DistroWatch. Don't know about the whole community. Because this is not a, a good statistic to begin with. But for the DistroWatch database, this is not a good picture. For Linux in general, my experience is that more and more distributions keep, every time like i said every time three goes away only once comes up see you all later bye bye